Let's bring in the former chair of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, Neil Chatterjee, and Energy Pro Nick Loris. It's great to have you both on. Happy New Year to you both, gentlemen. Thanks for spending time with us tonight. Okay, Nick, first to you. The president says, you know, what's going on in the House speakership fight is an embarrassment. What's an embarrassment is stagflation. And Kentucky just blacklisted nearly a dozen major banks because of their boycott, boycott of U.S. energy companies right when the president was visiting there with Senator McConnell. That's embarrassing. Yeah, there's a, a lot to unpack there. And, and certainly uh, Americans are concerned about runaway spending, about higher tax burdens that we're going to have to face to pay for this spending, and the federal government assuming the roles that the private sector should be assuming. And not every dollar in the infrastructure bill is bad. By any means, there's a lot of good and necessary investments in public infrastructure, in energy research and development. But at the same time, if we want to get that money out the door, we really need meaningful permitting reform. And that's something Thing the new Congress and the president should really focus on if we want to see a bipartisan, successful uh, strategy moving forward. Neil, where do you come down on this? It's good to have you on the show. It's good to see you, Neil, because now, you know, Kentucky State Energy can pull their money out of these banks, including state pension funds. We're talking Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, Chase, BlackRock. And this is all coming as the president has been criticized over his energy policy, but it's all about blowing out taxpayer money on his spending priorities. What do you think, Neil? Well, look, I agree with Nick. Not every dollar of taxpayer spending is wasteful spending. Look, I'm from Kentucky. I've crossed the Brent Spence Bridge thousands of times. I can tell you what a critical artery that is in our national infrastructure for our economy to keep goods moving about our economy. And we've struggled to find a complement to that bridge for years and years. This was a big deal and an example of a bipartisan compromise. When it comes to, you know, banks uh, and state governments and the divesting of certain things, look, I'm a big believer in letting the markets work and the markets function. I don't like it when California bars companies that invest in fossil fuels, and I don't like it when Kentucky bars companies that divest from fossil fuels. I would rather have investment houses make decisions about where they can make money and provide the greatest return to their shareholders and investors. I don't want those investors making decisions to reform society. If they think investing in decarbonization, which is a huge financial opportunity, is a good thing that can make money, they ought to do it. So what Neil just said, Nick, you know, by the way, Kentucky is a fossil fuel producing state. It's joining a growing number of states saying no to woke capitalism. It's West Virginia, also Florida, Texas, Utah, Louisiana. I mean, they're all moving to yank their money out of these banks that are saying pushing these ESG initiatives. So this is coming on the same day that what the president was doing in, in Kentucky. So there's more states saying no to this. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, I think Neil's point was spot on. I, we want more competition, and by restricting access to lending facilities and banks, you're restricting some of that competition. And I understand a lot of states with uh, abundant resources, if there is hostility to mining those resources, to developing oil and gas. But at the same time, if you sh restrict access to lending institutions, uh, what we've seen in some of these states that pass these laws is that it actually raises the borrowing rates for the states, and that increases the interest rates that are paid for by the taxpayers. And so when you're talking about pensions for teachers and firefighters and okay. uh, local office workers, you know, the focus really needs to be on the return they're going to see so they can retire uh, with a lot of money in their bank rather than focusing on, you know, these uh, woke bills or these yeah. anti-woke bills or some of these ESG, ESG bills like in California that are doing the same damage. Neil, your final word. Uh, look, I mean, Nick is right. These uh, uh, states should stay out of investments and investors should make decisions based on what is in their best financial interest and not allow, you know, greater uh, societal objectives to come into play. If you think investing in decarbonization will provide greater returns to your investors, do it. But don't do it because you're trying to reshape society. Got it. Neil Chatterjee and Nick Loris, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you.